I, just one thing. Can you turn on the lights? And then when I ask you to turn off, you turn off? OK, thank you. Uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about a future called Web Components. So what is this thing that everybody's talking about? And my name is Zeno Rocha. If you want to send any feedback, you know, this talk is awesome, this talk sucks. Or if you want to send any feedback, please pick me on Twitter. i will be more than happy to answer you. So I'm from Brazil. It's my first time here in UK. I'm extremely happy to be here with you guys today. And I have like 20 minutes to show you some crazy stuff. Like, oh my god, there's so amazing stuff going on on the web right now. You can tweet in this, in this hashtag or any hashtag you want. Just let me know the questions you have, and we can discuss later on the discussion panel. First, I, wanna, I want to you know, try to guess the future with you guys. So, you know, there's, there's so many things going on on the web right now, right? So in the past, we had so much things in. Before that, I just want to say this phrase that I think that the most famous client-side projects are fated to die. I know this is a really strong phrase to begin a talk, but I really think that this is going to happen with every single project that someone creates. And why is that? Well, think about the other projects that we had in the past. So for a long time, Flash was the only solution that we have to do animations, to do cool transitions, right? But then we have HTML5, and the platform noticed that, hey, people want to do animations on the web. People want to do transitions. So let's get them CSS transitions. Let's get them uh, Canvas, WebGL, and all those kinds of stuff, right? The same happened with jQuery. Five years ago, do some DOM manipulation was really, really hard. And you, you didn't want to get element by ID or get tags by class name and all those different APIs are very variables. So John Resig said, OK, let's create this thing that does DOM manipulation easier, and you just use CSS selectors. And everybody loved it. It was awesome. But then at a certain point, the platform realized that, hey, people want to do CSS. Uh, they want to do DOM manipulation using CSS selectors. So let's put this inside of the platform in the document.query selector, query selector all. Same thing happened with lots of UI components. Let's say you want a date picker, for example. You always need a date picker in your application. So what do you do? What do, you, do? you go to jQuery UI, and then you grab the date picker, you grab the CSS, the JavaScript, put in your application. The platform, again, realized that, hey, lots of people want date picker. Let's put this inside of the platform. And there we go. I'm not saying that everything will be native someday, you know? But those most common things that we always use on the web, in a certain point, they will become native. They will become part of the platform. It might take a long time, but in a certain point, it, it comes to, to the platform. But before trying to guess the future, we need to look to the present and see what the most big companies are doing right now, right? So Twitter, for example, they did Twitter Bootstrap, which is now the most popular open source project on GitHub, lots of stars, everybody using it. It's really nice. It's all about UI components, right? Facebook, they have React, the same concept of trying to put components in, in an easier way to create it. Adobe, they have top code. Same thing. You know, UI components, they want to make it more reusable, and that's it. LifeRay, the company I work for, we have all our UI. It's a set of UI components based on YUI that also have lots of UI components. Again, reusable components. Yahoo, they have pure CSS. So what I'm trying to say is that everybody's concerned about components today, right? We have those little boxes here, and you want to create this just once and reuse this in, along our application. You don't want to recreate everything all the time, right? But what about Google? What about Mozilla, those other big companies? Well, we'll talk about them in a second. But how we create components nowadays, right? You, some of you will be really familiarized with this process. I passed through this lots of time. I'm sure you, you had too. So the first step, you never create a new component. You just go to Google. If you want a carousel, for example, you just type carousel plugin jQuery. And then there's this huge list of amazing carousel plugins. 
And if there's one of those links that says the 45 best jQuery plugins, and then you click on there because you know that's the best and you go there. So that's the first step. You never create it. And then you see the code. You don't understand nothing about this. You just know that there's lots of CSS and JavaScript, and you hope it works. And if it works, it's like, oh, yeah, finally, and now I get something that really works. I have my carousel working. Awesome. But that's not a good way of creating components, right? You know? There might be something better. And that's why Web Components is here. So I have created one component. So Web Components is all about creating your custom elements. So we have lots of elements in HTML. Why don't we can create our own? And I created this one. It's called ScotlandJS. And now I will need to turn off the lights. Can you do that for me? So this is the ScotlandJS behavior naturally. It's just this thing, but if you turn off the lights, one more, this one, and then there's something happens. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. you. Yeah, can turn it on again. Yeah, it works. I'm not, I was not lying. So behind the hoods is just a device light API that works on Firefox, and it detects the lights on, the, on here and then does its magic. It's like five lines of code. It's really simple. But you can also extend existing tags, you know? You can go to a video element and extend it and say that, okay, I, have a, I want a video camera. How can you fetch the webcam of the user nowadays? You need to use the get user media API, right? And then there's this box that says that, hey, I want to use your camera. And then the user allows you to use the camera. And then you grab the stream of the, the webcam you put inside of the source attribute in your video. What if we just wrap it in an element? Wouldn't that be easier? You know, what's the source of this thing here that I created? It's just video is camera. That's it, that's the element, nothing more. And if I align here, boom, that's it. There's the webcam working. Awesome. So this is web components. And what is that about? It's just a set of specs that are running their way in W3C. Uh, Shadow DOM, templating, custom elements, import, decorators. Decorators we're not gonna talk about because there's no spec, just an introduction about it. But the other ones will Talk them briefly because we have not so many time. Uh, the first one, custom elements. So this is the one responsible to create your element and define it in your document. It's really easy to use it. You define the tag in your application, ScotlandJS will be the name of my tag, and then you use the HTML element prototype, you have some callbacks, and then you register in your document. That's pretty, pretty easy. And there are a couple life cycles that can help you out. If you work with UI widgets with some libraries like uh, YUI or I think Doja works like this, you have some callbacks. You have some life cycle callbacks. That's the same way we have here in, in custom elements. You know, we have the created callback, the attached callback, and the attached that says that when the element is attached or deattached, as the name says, and if an attribute changed in the UI, then something happens. Cool. There are two projects. Remember when I told you and uh, what companies like Google and Mozilla are working on? So this is what they're working on. Xtag is a, is a project by Mozilla. I don't know if you ever heard about it, this one. And Polymer is the other project. Both have those APIs to handle web components, custom elements, and everything else. OK, so now we know how to create your element. But to create your element, we need also to you know, reuse some blocks of code in your templating. Well, templating is not something new. It's all those reusable blocks of code that we can use in our applications. Nothing, it's not a big deal. And we have using templates for a while in the server side. We have Jinja, Handlebars, Mustache, Velocity. Name a server side language, we have a template for it. Uh, the same in client side. We have Handlebars, uh, we have Jade, we have Echo for CoffeeScript, we have Mustache, we have lots of different solutions for templating. But all those solutions are not very great. You know, there was a couple of, temp uh, couple of attempts to try to have templating in the client side, and none are, are really good. The first one is 
you just define a uh, div something and then you put it like display none. And the user will not see this image, but you want to reuse it in your application, so that's great. But the only problem is you are doing the request for this image even if it's not used. It. So this is not so good. The second attempt is what Handlebar does, for example. You have the script tag, and then you have this really weird MIB type, and then you have the image. This is good because the request is not being done, and then you don't have a request for this image. But you know, you see this, you don't feel right, you know? It's like, oh, mm, I don't know, this is strange. Well, now we have a template tag, and all those problems are solved, finally. And it's really, really easy to use it, you grab the template in your DOM, you grab this content, and then you just need to clone it using the clone node or the import node method function. There's no method. Uh, the third specification is the Shadow DOM specification. And the Shadow DOM, it's about encapsulating your code. Not just encapsulating, but hiding the implementation details. So we know how to create elements. We know how to reuse code into our elements. But we need to hide the implementation of this of this element into the element itself. So how can you do that? And that's why Shadow DOM is here. Have you ever thought about what's a video made of? I don't know if you ever think about this. So we have this thing, it's a video, it's a HTML5 video. If I inspect this, it's just a video with a source, okay, no big deal. But if you go here in the settings, and click on Show Shadow DOM. Then I can see what this video is made of. Hmm, interesting. Lots of divs. Hmm, there's a button here for the play. There's even an input type range to do this thing here. So you see that the HTML5 video player and other elements like, uh, the password, input type password. This one is nice. So I can put my password here. And I can inspect my password and see what is this made for. Of. Yay. Ah. So you see, the browser is using Shadow DOM for a while, but they haven't introduce this to, our, to, to us, to developers, but now we can use it. So this is just awesome, you know? You can do your custom elements and put some code inside of it. And the good part of this is that you don't need to worry anymore about uh, in style. You know, everything inside of the Shadow DOM, it's encapsulated there. So if you wanna use like a H1 and set all H1s to red inside of the Shadow DOM, this will not propagate to outside of your elements. So everything is scoped there, the CSS, the JavaScript, and the HTML. So you don't need those prefixes, you don't need those namespaces for CSS. This is just awesome, and it's very, very <coughs> easy to use it. And the last part, we, have, we know how to create elements. We know how to reuse blocks of code, we know how to encapsulate them and hide the implementation. But then we need to import into our document, right? Well, to do that, it's very easy. This HTML imports spec says that you can import HTML documents in other HTML documents. So remember the link tag that we use to import CSS? Well, we can use to import HTML now. Yeah, you can do that. I know it's weird, but you can. So you just need to change the rel attribute, put import, and then you just change the href to .html. So this is great. Yeah, but you know, web components rocks, but making your whole application in one tag, it's like making your whole website into one JPEG, right? That's what uh, Bruce Lawson said, and he's, he's true about it. You know, it's, it's just weird. And there's also this really nice tweet by Jeremy that says, hey, web components, the funny notion that hiding your JavaScript widget behind an HTML API will make it smell better, you know? People do lots of crazy and messy stuff in jQuery and YY and any other framework. We, don't, we can't expect that people will do like 
beautiful things using custom elements, we, using web components. People do shitty things. It's like, it's going to be a lot of crazy stuff, and you'll see it's like, oh my god, what is the guy is that doing? But yeah, people can do it. You have the power to do it now. But what about old browsers? You know, I'm not saying any specific old browser. I'm just, <laughs> what old browser? You know, we have this new stuff going on, yeah. Lots of new specs, but how is the, the compatibility with this thing? Well, there's this really nice website called Are We Componentized Yet? that tracks all the progress of the specs and how it's implemented in the browsers. Uh, and the good thing is, inside of the Polymer project, there's this platform.js file that you can use in your application and polyfill all those new technologies and start using right now. So this is awesome. But where can I find those elements? You know, Web components is nice, lots of people are using, but how can I find them? Should I look into NPM, Bower? What's the right package manager to look into? Well, NPM doesn't seem to be the right place, right? It's for node modules. Maybe it's Bower because it's the front-end package manager. Everybody's using it. But inside of Bower, how can you find the web components? You know, we have lots of different JavaScript libraries. How, how can you find web components there? Well, there's no way to, to find it uh, last year. So I got some friends together, like Eduardo, Bernard, and Djalma, and we launched customelements.io. It's live since last August, August 2013. It has almost 200 elements nowadays, uh, 100,000 page views, lots of people accessing it. So it's really nice. It's a really nice, really nice project. And people are starting to do crazy stuff. You know, we put custom elements live, and then we received lots of crazy stuff. You know, that video is camera element that I showed you before. This one that you can use the, the webcam, which is really nice. You can also create your elements and create your own attributes. So if I go here and, you know, I'm a really hipster guy. So I can put this filter attribute here and change it to sepia. And then, um, and then I can post it on Instagram, you know, do something <laughs> like that. There's other things that you can do. This one is very nice. So there's this library called Tracking.js. So this library does lots of crazy stuff, like color detection and what else? Face detection. So I have these controls here. It's like PS move controls. Let me turn them on. OK. These are on. OK. OK. So what I can do is we have this video is video tracking. And let me remove this thing. And you can say to your element, what do you want to track? So I want to track uh, color. But what color do you want to track? I want to track magenta. And if I put magenta in here, woo, I can do some crazy stuff. But yeah, this is nice. This is really nice. But I don't want to track color. I want to track a human. What part of this human do you want to track? <laughs> <laughs> I want to track the frontal face. I think it's nice for me. And I need to hide it from here. And then if I reload it, woohoo! Come on, this is just one tag and I'm doing face detection. Come on, this is crazy. This is insane. And also, you can do like other stuff. You can wrap your element and some web API into an element. So I have this element here, it's called voice player, and I can define the accent, I can find a text, and this one will be. Scotland E is awesome. Scotland E is awesome. <laughs> but, but this accent is really terrible. <laughs> oh, where can I find this one? Lots of files in here. Okay. Here it is. Let's change this. To TV. I think we'll be better. Then. Oops. Scotland E is awesome. No. 
I changed the wrong one. Here it is. Scotland is awesome. <laughs> much better, much better, much better. <laughs> so, you know, there's so many crazy stuff going on. It's like, boom, people are crazy, creating crazy stuff. You know, you can change the light, you can detect faces, you can create so many things. But how can I learn how to create my elements? So you said that, okay, here's, here are the specs, here are the gallery, but how can I create them? Well, if you want to build an element using Polymer, you can use this Polymer boilerplate that we put together. If you want to use Xtag, well, there's the Xtag boilerplate for you. If you want to use Vanilla.js, you don't want to use any other library, you want to see how it goes with just vanilla JavaScript, well, there's a vanilla boilerplate for you too. And if you want to automate things, because you know you still need to fork this and go to your repo and then changes all the strings for the strings you need, it's very easy, but you need to do this manual job. Well, we have created a Yeoman generator for you. So this Yeoman generator is the generator element. And let me show you in a second. So I can go and create something like my element. And if I type yo element, and I want to start a repo that contains an element. So I'll type yo element. There's this really nice banner that I took like three hours to do it. <laughs> and then. <laughs> The first question is, what do you want to use? Do you want to use Polymer, Xtag? Well, I, I want to use Polymer. What's your GitHub repository, your GitHub username, the name of your element, how would you describe it? Do you want lifecycle callbacks? Yeah, I want, no, I don't want. There's some useful grant text for you. Do you want to use it? Yeah, I want. And then we scaffold all the files for you. We run npm install and bar install to grab all dependencies, and there you have it. In five seconds, you can create your element. Everything is here for you, and all the files, and boom, boom, boom. You know, we import the platform JS, we import the element, we have the element in here. So it's really, really easy to create those. But again, where should I learn how to build this stuff? If I'm not in Scotland JS, where can I learn it? What's the main reference? Should I go to Polymer? Should I go to Xtag? Should I go to HTML5 Rocks? Should I find some random articles on the web, how can I really learn it? What's the main reference to learn about web components? Again, there was no main reference. So we put together some friends like Adios Money, you obviously know this guy, uh, and lots of uh, nice people, and we finally launched webcomponents.org. This week, it, it was the official launch, and yeah, it's a really great effort by lots of guys from Google, Mozilla, and from the community. And we have this place now that we can share articles, share presentations, share the specs, how is the browser support, and everything. And I have stickers. <laughs> so that's it. And before I go, I just want to say that the best way to predict the future is to create it. And that's exactly what we're doing today. We're not just waiting for someone to create the future of web components of the future of testing. We are here to create the future of the web platform. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>